Hey there guys, Zach here for Windows Central and welcome back to another video. Now today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 15002. This build includes a number of features and enhancements over the last public preview build which was 14986. Now this build is very similar to the leaked preview build that came out around Christmas build 14997 so if you've seen that video this video is going to be pretty similar feature wise. However there are some new additions that weren't in that build that we'll be demoing today including things I missed in that build such as context menus and live folders and whatnot so definitely stick around and watch this one even if you have seen the other one just saying that there will be some similarities between the two so diving straight in the first noteworthy changes are with Microsoft Edge Microsoft has been working hard on Microsoft Edge and have now included a new feature called setting tabs aside now what this allows you to do is as it says in the tin, set tabs aside. Now this will be very useful for those of you who are constantly using lots of tabs for a specific reason. So say if you're doing a report and you're researching web pages with Microsoft Edge, you can see here I've got Windows Central open and say I had Bing open as well and maybe Netflix, that's usually a good a selection of things to research not really uh, but say I'm doing my research then I decide I no longer want to be doing my research but I need to save these tabs for another time instead of minimizing the window and opening a new edge experience I can simply just set these tabs aside and they'll be put into a menu for later I can now begin browsing Amazon and buying things to my delight but when I need to start researching again I can click up here and restore this session and all of my tabs will be put back where I expect them to be and I can now load them all up again and continue researching where I left off. That's an excellent feature that I'm pretty sure many people, especially students, are going to adore. There's no way to turn off these buttons yet, I don't believe. Yeah, so I can't hide these. If you're somebody who won't be using this, you can't turn it off just yet. I assume you will be able to at some point, but that's not a feature in this build. If we jump into settings here, I don't think there's anything new in settings per se. Uh, doesn't look like it. I could be wrong, I don't remember. But yes, there are some behind the scenes improvements to Edge as well. So this in this build, Edge should perform better. It shouldn't crash as much or hang as much, which is something many insiders seem to experience. Not only that, there's now web payments, which will be built into Edge, which basically hooks up to your Microsoft wallet. And if you're at a website that supports it, instead of having to type in your details, Edge will just be like, hey, I can see that there's a form here that requires a credit card in details. Would you like me to insert the ones from your wallet? And you can just say yes, click that, and it will just process the payment for you. Very nice. Can't demo that, obviously, since uh, I don't want to show my bank details and card details and whatnot. But yes, that is a feature in this build. I don't think it's actually working yet. I think it's only for developers right now. Uh, but it will be there when the Creators Update launches in 2017, uh, April 2017, I believe. Not only that, if I right click the edge icon, you can see here there are options to jump to a new window or new in private window. These are things that should have been there since day one, but they weren't. They're there now. So instead of opening edge, going up here and then selecting new in private window, I can do it directly from the uh, from the icon now, which is fantastic indeed. Now, there are plenty of other edge improvements that I won't be walking through. Most of them are under the hood. That's why. Uh, but the overall Edge experience in this build is a lot better, much better than it is in the anniversary update currently, which is very nice. Now, moving on to the start menu, you can see the start menu now has live folders, similar to the live folders on Windows Phone. If I drop an icon over another icon, sorry, a tile over another tile, it will uh, put itself into a folder. So you can see I've done one here for this. I can do another one. So if I drop news onto that one, I've now made another folder and I can resize them much like you would expect and they will operate much the same as they do on Windows Phone. So that's very nice, opens the door to much more customization options on the start menu and the tablet mode start screen as well, which they do work here as well as you would expect. Very, very nice indeed. Now, if we move on to the share UI, the share UI has been redesigned. So if we launch a website here, let's go to this one and I hit share, you'll notice that the share UI is now in the middle of the screen rather than slides out from the right, which was very Windows 8 era design this is much more like windows 10 and now i can select one so let's select mail and i will then be able to send this web page off in an email which is very nice indeed now there's also the option to take a screenshot and copy it straight to your clipboard this wasn't the case before it always go into you can do a print screenshot now just save a screenshot into your screenshots folder but now if you press the windows key shift and s i can now crop a specific area of the screen and that will save directly to my clipboard and then I can paste that into a document or a web page or whatever, and that will just copy that specific clipping rather than the whole screen, which is much preferred, especially if you're trying to censor out specific information or just want to show off a specific thing on your screen. 
Uh, this is very similar to the OneNote option that OneNote had in OneNote 2016 app. So fantastic to see that built into Windows 10 now. Now, this is a big feature to me, at least. This won't be something many people notice, but resizing windows now actually performs like you would expect. Now, I know that sounds weird because resizing windows has been a thing since Windows 95, and it seems to have worked fine since then. It did, but it wasn't perfect. You would resize the window and you would always find uh, graphical glitches up here for the file explorer, for example, or in Notepad from the whole right side of the page or the window when resizing it, you'd see like this black tearing and just horrible stuff that you'll probably, ch you've tuned out by now since it's been so long since this bug showed up. I think it's over a decade at this point. So yeah, it's been fixed in this build. If I resize the window really fast, you'll notice that it doesn't happen at all. It's it just, it's perfect. Look at it. It just seems and looks perfect. Now, like I said, this isn't something most people are going to notice. And to be fair, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you probably don't see any difference. So this is definitely a thing for those of you who pay attention to UI problems. It's now been fixed and it's pretty fantastic. So excellent to see Microsoft looking at the small details there. Paints a good picture for other improvements that will be coming down the line. I'm very excited indeed. Now if we jump into Windows Inc. Windows Inc. has, in, has some improvements, not many. If we go into the that one. <laughs> the eraser tool you can see there's now options for different kinds of eraser uh, microsoft has also updated the taskbar logic so that if you have the windows ink icon on the taskbar that shows up on every monitor if you have multiple monitors of course rather than just the main one which is fantastic now we move down to cortana My cortana has some new stuff apparently if we go into options here you can see going enabling this option the windows key and c will now make her listen automatically so if i do that what's the weather like today the forecast shows mostly sunny skies with a high of 49 and a low of 47. That's the case. Now, now Cortana is also showing up in more areas in the system, including the out-of-box experience. Now, I've already done a video on this. You can click the annotation on screen now to check that out. That showed up in build 14997. And basically, Cortana is there and helps you walk through the setup experience when setting up a new Windows 10 PC. It's pretty great. It doesn't work entirely just yet. Microsoft is still making more improvements to it. However, it is there and it is working in this build and it's pretty nice. So make sure you check out that video after this one. Now, if we go into the settings app, settings has also received a number of improvements, including new categorized areas and improved layouts of the whole settings app itself. So there's a new apps area here, which incorporates apps and features, default apps, offline maps and apps or websites. None of these are new options by any means. They've just been moved from other areas in the settings app. If we jump into settings, so you can see there's less options in here now, and that's very nice. They're cleaning up and reorganizing settings so they fit more nicely into categories. Uh, and if you notice here, there's also a new option for blue light. Now, this is a feature that if you're using your F-Lux or Flux, I'm not entirely sure what they call themselves, uh, it basically dims the screen, gives it a, a much more warmer color uh, during the evening and nighttime. Now, why would you want this? Well, looking at a screen, we're gonna go scientific for a second here. Now, normal screens emit something called a blue light, which tricks your brain into thinking it's looking at daylight. Now, this is a problem if you're using PCs late into the night because your brain still thinks it's daytime. So when you shut off your PC and go to bed, your brain has trouble turning off. Enabling this option here will kind of help with that by giving the screen a much more warmish color so your brain is thinks it's looking at something other than sunlight, perhaps a, a nice warm lamp or whatever. And it just helps with getting your brain settled for the night. So this is something that will only benefit you if you use PCs in the evening or when it's dark outside. Otherwise, this won't be something for you. So you can have the option to turn it off automatically or turn it on automatically. And you can also adjust the temperature at night. Now, this isn't something that you can see because it does affect the actual screen. Uh, I don't think it is. I don't think it's showing up in this recording at all, but it is actually changing here. If I just go down here, my screen gets much more yellow and orange than it does normally. So uh, that's something that you will want to check out for yourself. Now, if we uh, moved down to here, cross device experiences. Now this isn't a new feature by any means. This showed up in the anniversary update. It's just been renamed uh, and given a much more um, prime position in the settings app. So I believe this was this showed up in the privacy area before, but what this basically allows developers to do is to let users open apps on other devices, send messages between them and invite others to use apps with me. No developers are actually using this yet as far as I know, so I can't demo it. It does sound great, but until developers start picking it up, I can't really do anything with it to show you. But that description there should be enough alone to kind of give you an idea of what Microsoft has planned for this feature, which is fantastic. You may notice also here that some of the areas have been sort of redesigned and relayed out. So no longer do you get that weird preview. 
uh, you just got just drop out down menus for resizing DPI and resolution and stuff. If we jump into Bluetooth here, the Bluetooth area has also been uh, slightly redesigned, although it's not really doing anything since I have no Bluetooth devices nearby, which is odd because I usually do. Perhaps it's not working. Not only that, there's this sidebar here, which actually is contextual. So you may have noticed it a minute ago. There was nothing here, but now there is. Now, if I click on one of these, I should be able to take them straight into another area here. For example, if we go to device and printers, which should open up my uh, control panel and that's all fine and dandy. Jumping into personalization, there's a new theming option. Now Microsoft is working to build themes into the Windows Store, which you'll be able to download and just install one click and they will change the background, color, sounds and mouse cursor of your machine, which is very nice indeed. There are a few themes installed by default here, this one and uh, this one and they've all got images and stuff that are turning every 30 seconds or whatever, which is very nice. You can also customize individual elements so I can now change the color of my uh, accent theme if I want. Not only that, there's now an option for recent colors and down here has been changed slightly as well. And instead of these options being a toggle, just like this one, they're now tick boxes, which makes much more sense if you think about it. Moving into settings, Windows Update has been given some improvements as well. There's now this pretty cool icon, which actually gives you a nice green tick when there's no updates installed. Uh, no updates to be installed, sorry. And if you go into advanced options here, you'll see that there's now an option to pause updates. Now, this is a thing many people have been asking for since Windows 10 came out in 2015. You can now finally temporarily pause updates for up to 35 days. Now, this will be beneficial to you if you work in a business that isn't managed by a workspace or whatever, and you just are worried about updates breaking your machine. You can pause them for up to 35 days, get the all clear from other people who have installed the update and say, yes, there's nothing wrong with it, and you can install an update. Also great for people like streamers who are needing to use their PCs to stream video games live and uh, and you just sometimes an update will be ready to install and Windows will often not be like, hey, it's time to install this update now. There's nothing you can say about it. But now you can obviously pause that, which is fantastic. And there's that little green icon, like I said it was. And there'll also be an option to make sure Windows Update doesn't install drivers, which it will be great for those of you who have a machine that has drivers that are breaking something on your machine. So I can't show that here because that's only for Windows 10 Pro and above. This is Windows 10 Home. Uh, but yeah, that'll be an option as well. Now, if we move on to the Windows Defender app, the Windows Defender app has been given a few more improvements here. Uh, we go, there's now a new health device performance and health option uh, area here, which gives you an uh, overview of what's wrong or what's right with your machine. You can see here that it thinks that I'm using my screen brightness too high, which affects battery life. I can also re refresh Windows directly from the Defender app, which is pretty great. and do a quick scan or whatever else. This is a very nice app, actually. I'm very excited to see this roll out to everybody in April. So yes, very nice update to Windows Defender. Not only that, there's also an improvement to the Windows Holographic app. Now, I can't actually demo the holographic UI because none of the VR machines that support this are out yet. Uh, but there's now a nice new background here, which is slightly animated. If you take a close look, you can see the tree here is slightly moving uh, and, it's, and it's pretty nice. But if you press get started here, it won't let me continue because apparently I don't have a USB 3.0 on this device, even though I do. So keep that in mind. When VR comes out, we'll be doing a whole separate video on the VR experience with Windows 10. It'll be pretty cool. But until then, uh, stay tuned at Windows Central. And I believe that's basically it for all the most noteworthy changes in this build. Uh, the blue screen of death is now green. I can't show that, obviously, since I'm actually using the machine to record the desktop. But picture the blue screen of death and then make it green. That's what it looks like. It's pretty great. Uh, then there is also... Yeah, that's it. That's all there is. There's nothing else. Everything else is just much smaller enhancements. Now, everything I've demoed here isn't everything in this build. There's a lot more smaller improvements that just aren't worth showing because they're just so small or insignificant or just under the hood. So make sure you download this build and check it out for yourself. Not on a primary machine because although this build is pretty much feature complete, there's still a few more features actually coming. Uh, but even though this build is almost feature complete, uh, there are a lot of known issues, uh, mostly referring to Cortana, such as um, syncing notifications across devices no longer works. That's a big deal to me, uh, as well as Windows Hello will sometimes not work properly on the lock screen, which again might be a big deal to some of you as well. So keep that in mind. However, this is a pretty interesting build, definitely uh, one that resembles what the final creators update will look like. We are still missing a couple of things, such as my people, which will be showing up in the taskbar at some point. But yes, a very exciting time if you're a Windows Insider. Stay tuned at Windows Central for more regarding Windows. Windows 10 and the creators update. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one. Bye bye.